Jumbo Visma completely crack Tare Pagacha again on the steep slopes of Col de la Loz. I'm dead. <laughs> this was stage 17 of the Tour de France, over 5,000 meters climbing and a 30 kilometer climb through Maribel to Col de la Loz up to 2,300 meters. Three pretty hard climbs preceded that. And so it was guaranteed to be a beast of a stage in pretty hot conditions Two, the French teams with Gull, Godou and Pino would surely want to get in the breakaway. And Pagacha, would he be able to strike back after Vingegaard's win the TT yesterday? But the polka dots dominated the early breakaway formation once again, with Pedersen wondering why Paulus wouldn't pull through with him. They made it to the base of the first Category 1 climb called a Cezy, and then it all kicked off. With Tari Pagacha, you can see him actually just in front of Jonas Vingegaard. Uncharacteristically, he crashes. He just overlaps wheels with the Asia 2R rider and chops himself. And then he's kind of behind in the group. But at the same time, Rafael Micah, his teammate, is sneaking into the break that's just formed with Haig, Schelmoza, Giacone, Thibaut Pino, Gala, really, really strong breakaway. And Jumbo Visma don't seem to like that very much. They put Dylan Van Bala on the front. Now, maybe they were worried about Simon Yates 13, 14 minutes behind on GC, but I doubt it. It seemed to be like they didn't want Micah in the break without them being represented. Simon Yates more of a Ineos, Carlos Rodriguez, or Peo Bilbao Bahrain problem. Nonetheless, they pace hard. Pagacha talking on the radio saying if he's all right, or not with his knee bloodied and all of a sudden Teish Benoit off the pacing of Dylan Van Bala just accelerates out of the peloton going across to the breakaway with Vingegaard and Pagacha over the top though Haig and others they are allowed to reform the break because Mike is brought back now this is the peloton in the bottom left that's the peloton and if you're there and you're not on UAE or Yumbo you're basically allowed to go in the breakaway and that's what happens. So the same or very similar really strong break forms initially without any UAE or Jumbo Visma riders with Laporte now setting a steady tempo a minute back until UAE attack out of the peloton with Micah and Soler. So they wanted to be in the breakaway. Jumbo had to be on their coattails with them and they get across to this break that has Simon Yates, has Peo Bilbao, Felix Gull, Godou, Pino, really, really strong break. And yeah, Jumbo Visma just chug away behind it. So it's actually more of a Ineos and, and Bora problem with those guys like Bilbao and Yates, you know, fringe fourth, fifth guys on GC. But anyway, Yumbo pacing hard, so why take over from them? But Hagen Trek did an excellent job, even though Yumbo were keeping it tight. The cars were only allowed to come up past the breakaway when the gap was over a minute and stable at the top of Corne de Rosalon, which is, you know, over two hours, I think, into this stage. The descents in the valleys, though, that's where the break won this stage. Asia Tuar working with Nons Patez, Trek with Schielmose, Jayco often with Lawson Craddock against one rider from Yumbo, and that extended that gap out to 2 minutes 50, and that made Ineos nervous, because now Carlos Rodriguez fourth is under threat. They came to the front with Frailer, and they couldn't really bring the gap back, even with Pollitt's help for Bora Hansgrohe, because this break was really slamming it into the base of Col de la Loz, 243 the gap. And this is a beast of a climb. In two parts, not as hard to Maribel, but the last 5Ks up to Col de la Loz are really, really difficult. And do they suit Jonas Vingard? Tari Pagacha, on the other hand, he got dropped by Rolic here in 2020, but not a major time loss. And it's all Ineos chasing Bilbao, chasing Yates. O'Connor's on the front for Felix Gull. He's absolutely driving it. The peloton shredded, but Tarek Pagacha wasn't looking to crash hot. Even at the early slopes of Col de la Loz to Maribel with Frailer pacing for Ineos, he wasn't looking the best. Now, easy to say in hindsight, but what a magnificent job from Asia Tuar and Bahrain today. And Jayco too, putting teammates in the breakaway with their rider, keeping Yumbo at bay with Van Aert dropping. And now what were Yumbo going to do with their two riders ahead? They've now only got Dylan Van Baal and Koos behind. What's the use of Benoit and Kelderman? What were they planning to use them for? Because at the moment, Ineos were directing traffic and controlling the pace, setting a hard pace with Castroviejo. Kvyatkovsky still in the group. O'Connor finishes his pull. Yates says to Harper, your turn. Time to increase the pace even more. And that reduces the group basically to AG2R with Gull and Simon Yates. O'Connor doesn't want a slice of pizza. And now it's Kvyatkovsky time. And this is the first frame where we knew the Tour de France was over. When Jonas Vingegaard had Kuss in his wheel and Pagacha was behind Soler, that is not how Pagacha's ridden on the climbs, especially in the pointy end of them, 
all Tour de France, and it was pretty much confirmed in the next shot overhead. Pagatcha dropping from the group, Kuz going straight to the front, licking his lips with over 7.5 k's to go on the climb. At this point, we knew it would be huge gaps, but just how big with Pagatcha having a huge crisis on the Col de la Lowe slopes. Vingegaard looking good, but could he catch Yates and Felix Gala ahead of him? The answer was no. Gala attacking off the pace of Harper. No one, Micah or Simon Yates, able to respond. And it's actually Micah here. And this is the UAE might have been expecting that Pagatcha was feeling really bad because they didn't even drop Micah back to start helping him. Vingegaard is continually looking back like Pagacha is going to appear out of nowhere. Gets across the satellite rider number one. Bad news for Tali Pagacha with the gap nearly at a minute already. He drops Kus, Ineos and Hindley. But he's not making much inroads on Felix Gull who did the second quickest last 30 minutes of this climb after only Jonas Vingegaard despite being in the breakaway. Benoit drops Yates and now Vingegaard he wants to launch across to satellite rider number to Kelderman further up the road and this is really undulating the steep 14, 15, 20% pinches on lows then it levels off hot conditions and this was just a brutal stage huge time gaps and Vingegaard putting the Tour de France to bed after what had been a close two weeks preceding it but goal was incredibly strong on the steep slopes despite Simon Yates trying to come back to him and maybe aided by the moto stalling and Vingegaard having to stop for 15 seconds I don't think that changed the result and Keldman launching Vingegaard across to him but with 1k to go you're not closing 153 to goal who wasn't slowing down so no stage win for Vingegaard that looked like Felix goals if he could maintain his 20 second advantage on the descending part of the, the Col de Lowe's climb where he struggled in the past, but he was too good there and in the punchy Altiport finish. Vingegaard taking it easy, goal winning the stage, huge performance, queen stage of the Tour de France from the breakaway, holding off Vingegaard chasing from behind, who finally shows some weakness on the Altiport, but puts over six minutes into Tadej Pogacar in this stage, who said on the team comms, I'm dead. Don't worry about me. I'm done. So sad to see Pagacha finish the Queen stage like that. Goal winning the stage, 34 seconds ahead of Simon Yates. Bill Bow in third, then Vingegaard, Gudu, Johansson, Harper, Micah, Yates, Kelderman. Here's Tanner Pagacha on what happened during this stage. What happened? You crashed today, of course. What, what exactly happened? Can you. Detail? I don't know. I just. Yeah, it's like. I tried to eat as much as possible, but it was like nothing goes in my legs. Everything just stays in my stomach and I come really empty after three and a half hours or some. So I was really empty at the bottom of the climb. And yeah, if I don't have such a great support around me, uh, I was already thinking to lose podium today. But uh, yeah, I was keep fighting with Mark until the finish line. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for, for all my teammates and fans. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know down below what do you think happened on this stage to cause Pagacha lose so much time. And I'll see you at the recap of stage 18 tomorrow. Ciao.